this session, we will introduce you to generally accepted accounting principles and show you how to begin to analyze common business transactions. The acronym GAAP, or Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, refers to rules companies follow when recording transactions or preparing financial reports for external users. We're going to introduce six of these principles to help get us started analyzing common business transactions. The first principle is the business entity principle. It states that every business has to be accounted for separately from its owners. If the information is mixed up between the owners and the business, the information that's produced by the accounting system is not going to be very useful for outside users to base their information on, for example, banks or government agencies. The cost principle states that financial information is based on a price a company pays for something, not just someone's opinion of the value. Real estate often has a tax value and appraised value and the price somebody is willing to pay for something. If we have a tax value of $20,000 and an appraised value by a professional appraiser and they said the property is worth $25,000 and we have a purchaser willing to pay $22,000 for the property and the vendor decides to sell it to them, the value of that company or the cost of that land would be $22,000. The objectivity principle states that information must be supported by verifiable evidence. And this really closely relates to the cost principle since the transactions are based on cost, they're also supported by evidence. When applying the going concern principle, users assume that the business is going to continue its operations into the future instead of being closed or sold. Inventory the cost of business, $5,000, may have to be recorded at a lower value if the business was going to close next week and needed to get rid of things quickly. The monetary unit principle states that transactions are expressed using units of money as the common denominator. You can't mix Canadian dollars with U.S. dollars or with English pounds. They have different values. So everything has to be converted to one common denominator, meaning Canadian dollars, if it was a Canadian company. One of the most important principles we use when we record transactions is the revenue recognition principle. And this states that revenue has to be recorded at the time it is earned, regardless of when we collect the money for that service or for that good. If, for example, we sold something on April the 15th and we collected the money in May, in May 31st, if we performed the service on April 15th, this is the date we use to record the transaction, not May 31st when we actually collect the money. This formula, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, is known as the accounting equation or the balance sheet equation. This equation is the foundation of accounting because it has to stay in balance at all times. It can be rewritten so that assets minus liabilities equals owner's equity. When you do that, the result, owner's equity, is often called net assets. When we record or analyze transactions, we need to follow two rules. Every transaction has to change at least two accounts and the accounting equation must remain in balance after each transaction is recorded. We use charts like this to help us practice analyzing transactions. This chart is based on the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Under the assets, we have three different kinds of assets. We have cash, we have supplies, and we have furniture. Under liabilities, we have two types of liabilities. We have accounts payable, and we have notes payable. Under owner's equity, we have owner's capital. Remember that capital changes for four different reasons. It goes up when the owner invests money in the company. It also goes up when the company has revenues. It goes down when the owner takes money out of the company, a withdraw. It also goes down when the company has expenses or costs of producing those revenues. So in order to put something under the capital column, it has to be for one of these four reasons.
When we read transactions, we need to determine which accounts are changing and if they're increasing or decreasing. So the first example of a transaction we have is Carol Finley invests $10,000 cash in the business. So when we read that, we need to find the, tra the accounts that are changing. And there's two keywords in the sentence. The first one is invest, and the second is cash. The word invest means that the owner is investing money in the company, and that goes under capital. When we look at the chart, we have to determine whether or not that investment is making the value of the company or the owner's capital go up or go down. And investments make the value of the company go up, so we're going to leave that as a positive number. The other word that we have defined, the other word that we've identified is cash. So cash is another account that this business is using. So cash is another account that this business uses, and we're going to put the $10,000 under the cash column. We have to determine if the company's cash is increasing or decreasing. So if the owner gives the cash, so if the owner gives the company cash, the company's bank account is going up. So both of those transactions would increase. We need to determine if the accounting equation is in balance. So we look at the right side of the transaction and we have a positive 10,000, and then we look at the left side and then we have a positive 10,000. So the transaction, so the accounting equation is in balance. Another example of a transaction is when the company purchases supplies for $2,500 cash. When we read this transaction, we have to identify the accounts that are changing, and we have supplies and cash. We know that cash is an asset, and we're going to write the $2,500 under the cash column. Now, when a company purchases supplies for cash, the company's cash is going down. So I'm going to put brackets around the $2,500 under the cash column to, to identify that it's a decreasing. The other account that's changing is the supplies account. So I'm going to put the $2,500 under the supplies column. And that means that the company has $2,500 more supplies than it did before. So that means that account is increasing. When we check to see if the accounting equation is in balance, the left side has to equal the right side. Assets have to equal liabilities plus owner's equity. On the right side of the transaction, there are no liabilities and no owner's equity. So this side of the transaction equals zero. So this side of the accounting equation equals zero. When we look at the left side, we have a minus 2,500 and a positive 2,500, and when we add those together, we also get zero. So the accounting equation still is in balance. This transaction states that the company purchased $1,100 of supplies on credit. So there's that word supplies again. They're purchasing supplies. And then we have this phrase on credit. When you see this phrase on credit, one of two things have to be happening. We either are purchasing something on credit or we're selling something on credit. When we purchase something on credit, you have to make the connection that this is accounts payable. When we sell something that's on credit, you have to make the connection that it is accounts receivable. So in this example, we're purchasing something on credit, so that's accounts payable. Remember, accounts payable is a debt, 
We're going to put that $1,100 in the accounts payable column, and the company has $1,100 more debt than it did before, so the account is increasing. We're also going to put that $1,100 under the supplies account. Does the company have more supplies than it did before? And the answer to that question would be yes. So that number is also positive. When we check to see if the accounting equation is still in balance, the left side has to equal the right side. We have a positive $1,100 on the asset side and a positive $1,100 on the liabilities and owner's equity side. In this transaction, the company purchased $6,000 of furniture on credit and a promissory note was signed. Whenever they mention promissory note, the word note means notes payable. So that's one account that's changing. The other account that's changing is that their company is purchasing furniture. So we're going to take that $6,000 and put it under the furniture column. The company has $6,000 more furniture than it did before, so that number is increasing. We're also going to put the $6,000 under the notes payable account. Remember, notes payable is a debt. So this is something that the company has to pay for sometime in the future. When you purchase something on credit, your debt goes up, so that number is also increasing. When you check to see if the accounting equation is in balance, the left side has to equal the right side. So we have a positive $6,000 on the asset side and a positive $6,000 on the liabilities and owner's equity side. In this transaction, the company is rendering services for $2,200 cash. When we analyze this transaction, we have cash changing. So we're going to put the $2,200 under the cash column. And when we render services, what we're doing is providing services to customers and they're paying us with cash. So our cash account is going up. This phrase right here, services rendered, is one that you'll have to get used to and always related to revenue. It means that the company has provided services to customers and that's the definition of revenue. When we look at the accounting equation, we see that there are no revenues listed in the accounting equation, but we have to remember that there are four things that make the value of the capital go up or down, and revenue is one of them. So remember, when we put something under the capital column, it has to be a revenue or an expense, an investment, or a withdrawal. So in this case, we have a revenue, so we're going to put that $2,200 under the revenue column. We know that revenues and investments make the value of the company go up, and expenses and withdrawals make the value of the company go down. So that $2,200 under capital is a positive number. When we check to see if the accounting equation is in balance, the left side has to equal the right side. In this transaction, the company's making a payment of $1,000 rent in cash. And when we analyze this transaction, there's that cash account again. And the other thing that changes is going to be the rent expense account. And the other key phrase in this sentence is rent expense. This is what they're paying for. So we're going to put the $1,000 in the cash column. And this time, they're not receiving cash, but they're paying cash. So I'm going to put the cash in brackets to indicate that it's a negative number. I'm also going to put that $1,000 under the capital column because, and capital changes for one of four reasons, revenues, expenses, investments, and withdrawals. We're going to use a D for withdrawals because some companies call that withdraw a draw, so it's a standard practice in industry. It also creates an acronym to help us remember what goes in that capital column? Read. When we look at the expenses, we have to remember that revenues make the value of the company go up, expenses make it go down, investments make it go up, and draws make it go down. So we're going to put brackets around this $1,000 to indicate that the owner's capital or the book value of the company is going down. 